I have come here to kick ass and review movies. And I'm all out of ass. Wait. Hey everyone, it's Alexander Robinson. Welcome to the channel, and this is my review for They Live, released in 1988, directed by John Carpenter, and stars Rowdy Roddy Piper. The movie takes place in Los Angeles and stars Roddy Piper as a drifter who's just trying to make it in society. He's looking for work, he doesn't have a home, but he's trying to make the best that he can. While in Los Angeles, he comes across a pair of sunglasses that when he puts them on, he soon realizes that there's an alien invasion happening, or more like it did happen. Basically, all the magazines and all the billboards have secret messages. There's certain people out there that are actually aliens, and he tries to convince another co-worker of his, played by Keith David, that there's something going on, that aliens have taken over the world, and they need to stop it. This was another one of the movies that I wanted to review last year before catching COVID, and I I actually debated with myself on whether to review this movie or not because it's a John Carpenter movie uh, who's most famous for making Halloween and The Thing, two iconic horror movies. But They Live is not necessarily horror. I mean, when you think about it, it's more a science fiction alien movie. There's nothing all that scary about it, but after watching the movie twice, uh, I can actually make the argument that it is a horror movie. Let's bookmark that and I'll talk about it near the end of the review. Uh, but yeah, my first time watching this movie was actually last year, uh, and I was really impressed by it. Even before seeing this, uh, it's one of those movies that I've already been familiar with because of the cultural osmosis of it. The glasses, the look of the aliens, uh, some of the iconic and quotable lines, like the one that I modified at the beginning of this video. It's one of those movies that I already was familiar with even without seeing it uh, and it definitely is one of John Carpenter's best movies. I still think Halloween is his best but I actually might like this over The Thing. It's been a while since I've seen The Thing, but right now I think I prefer They Live. Mainly because of its intriguing concept, its originality, and just how overall clever it is. This is basically a giant social commentary against capitalism, how the rich get richer and the poor stay poor, and the movie is not at all subtle about this at all, which may be the only major issue I have with the movie, or, okay, let me rephrase that. I don't personally have an issue with that, uh, but I know there's a lot of people out there that say, oh, keep politics out of movies. Ignoring the stupidity of that statement, uh, this is one movie that those people probably would hate just because it's so in your face with its social commentary, which surprisingly holds up just as well in 2023 as it did in 1988. Uh, and this is the 35th anniversary of They Live as well. So the fact that this movie holds up just as well today as it did back then is impressive. It's a novel idea to have the evil millionaire scumbags be the aliens, and it feels like a logical alien invasion. It's probably a more realistic take on an alien invasion. Like, the aliens probably wouldn't want to destroy society. They'd want to take over from within, live among us, and basically keep the human race down while they elevate themselves. It's kind of in a way like Invasion of the Body Snatchers, where you don't know who among you is an alien or who is a real person. And you could tell that this movie is very influenced by the movies of the 1950s. Similar to how a movie like The Creator recently was heavily influenced by a bunch of science fiction movies from the 80s. A lot of original science fiction movies from the 80s were influenced by the 50s, including the very next review in this Halloween series of reviews. Now, I do understand that this movie is technically based off the short story 8 o'clock in the morning from the 1960s, but whenever I hear anyone talk about They Live, they don't really mention this aspect of it. So I get the feeling that most people aren't aware that this is based off a short story, similar to how many people forget that John Carpenter's The Thing is actually a remake. One of the best scenes in the movie is the fist fight between Roddy Piper and Keith David. This goes on 
for a long time. Like it is one of the longest fight scenes ever. And this is normally one of those instances where I'd complain about a fight scene being unnecessarily long, but it has a purpose this time around because the fight scene is basically a metaphor for politics in real world. Huh? You have somebody, let's say Roddy Piper, trying to convince someone else that, hey, what's going on in society, it's wrong. They're trying to keep us down and we got to stand up and fight back. And then Keith David is like, look, I just want to live my life. Leave me out of this. And it's an argument that just goes on forever and ever, except in the real world, we mostly use our words in terms of these arguments. Here, it's an actual fist fight. Another metaphor that this fist fight represents is that while the working class is fighting amongst each other, the rich 1% are up in their ivory towers smoking their cigars, counting their money, and going, oh, those poor little peasants. Oh how stupid they are. So yeah, it's a great sequence overall and plays into the not so subtle social commentary of this movie. And both Roddy Piper and Keith David are great. They work really well together. And this was actually Roddy Piper's first acting role because he was most known for wrestling at the time. And he was actually the first major wrestler to transition into acting successfully. And without Rowdy Roddy Piper, there'd probably be no movies from Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Concept. Roddy Piper is a very down-to-earth kind of guy who at first does have faith in the American system, but once he puts on the glasses, he really discovers the truth behind it and is trying to stop this alien invasion from within on behalf of humanity to basically restore the America that he believes in. At least that's what I got from his performance. He's really fun, and the big one-liner of this movie, I have come to chew bubblegum and kick ass and I'm all out of bubblegum, that was actually a line that he wanted to use in his wrestling days, but never got the chance to until this movie. So that's pretty cool. The score is really good. Once again, it's done by John Carpenter and his collaborator Alan Hoarth, but it doesn't feel as synthy as their scores for Halloween 2 and 3. Uh, this one feels a little more run down. Uh, there's that harmonica that consistently plays. Uh, I really liked it. For anyone who has not seen this movie, I'm not going to say what happens in the end, though I will say it doesn't end the way you'd probably want a movie like this to end. There's several twists and turns that the script takes, uh, and when you get to the end of the movie, it just feels kind of ambiguous and you're just left there wondering okay what happens next it very much is like the ending to halloween where michael myers is shot dr loomis looks out the window and he's gone except in the case of they live we never got a sequel i was about to say because of the times we're living in we probably do need one but earlier in this video i just said it's as relevant today as it was back in 1988 so no we don't need a sequel we don't need a remake because they live is such a unique science fiction movie yeah now is it horror does it categorize itself into being a horror movie? I would say yes, because it's not horror in the sense that it's a monster or a slasher villain. There are aliens, sure, but it's more social horror. The idea that all these mega millionaires are profiting off us, making tons of money, and keeping the little guys, the working class, down and out. I would say that this is absolutely a horror movie. And I would also say that it is worth seeing in your lifetime. It is a very clever movie. The script is great. There's some quotable lines, iconic designs, memorable scenes, and again, an ending that doesn't really wrap up everything in a nice bow and is probably not the ending you want, but it's the ending that makes the most sense. If you've never seen They Live, you should definitely check it out because it's a lot of fun. And there you go. That's my review for They live. Now, on Monday, I'm going to be talking about another horror movie from 1988 that was also heavily influenced by science fiction films from the 1950s, and that would be Killer Clowns from Outer Space. This movie I had just recently watched for the first time, so I'm excited to talk about it on Monday. But for now, I want to know what you guys think about They Live. If you've seen it, what did you think? Whatever the case may be, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell button to get notifications. You can also follow me at Facebook, Instagram, Letterboxd, Threads. I'll see you guys in the next video. But until then, have a good day and take care of yourselves.